What's up friends? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm super glad you're here. And today I'm gonna to show you how to add movement to your B-roll footage. Let's take a look at this clip for example. There's not a ton of movement in it, but after the tutorial, it's gonna look like this. Super easy to do, and it makes some of the footage that you thought you couldn't use usable. So let's do it. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do, obviously, is open up Adobe Premiere, and if you don't have it, you should probably get it. I have Adobe Premiere opened up. I'm gonna walk you guys through a couple clips and how I added movement to them, and you're gonna be able to do the same thing. It's gonna be a big fun party. So let's take a look at this first clip here. As you can see, it's a very slow motion shot of me kinda of turning my iPhone. There's not a ton of movement here. So one of the first things I like to do with this footage is add the cinematic looking black bars to the top and bottom of it. So the easiest way to do that is to create an adjustment layer by clicking here. Adjustment layer, okay. And you're just gonna drag that bad boy right on. Look at that, it's beautiful. And to add the black bars, we're simply going to go over to effects here, type in crop, drag that onto the adjustment. 12% on the top, 12% on the bottom. Look at that. Already looks more cinematic, but I'm gonna show you why this is also helpful to do when adding movement to your B-roll. So the next thing we wanna do after we've added the black bars is automate the position and scale of the clip by adding in keyframes and it's super easy. So let's select our clip here. What you wanna keep in mind is if we are adding movement, you're gonna to need to zoom in on the clip a little bit. So we can simply do that by taking the scale and just dragging it up a bit. Keep in mind when doing this, the one trade-off is the fact that you do lose some of that footage real estate by zooming in. But if it allows you to keep a clip that you would normally just throw away, well then you might want to do it. So we've scaled this clip into about 120. Uh, let's go to 120, 25 there. And we're gonna take the position and just drag it over to that end of it. So I want the movement of this clip to go from right to left. So now that I've dragged the position of it all the way over to the right side, what I'm gonna do is hit this little animation button there, which automatically adds the keyframe. And I'm just gonna drag this cursor all the way to the end of my clip, all right there. And we're going to just drag this back over just like that. And when you drag it over, as soon as you lift up on your mouse, it's adding another keyframe and the animation is already there. So let's watch the clip back now. And as you can see here, there's a bunch more movement in the clip that I didn't have before. The next thing I wanna do is give it a little speed ramp to give it a little bit more energy in the clip. Now, an important thing to keep in mind is that if you are going to animate position and scaling, do that to the clip first and make sure you nest that clip with the animation and then add the speed ramp to the nested clip. I'll show you how to do that. Right, click here, click nest, click okay. Right click here and you guys probably know how to do a speed ramp, but just for fun, we're gonna show you here. Controller command on your keyboard, click that in. And the thing with speed ramps is you just gotta kind of experiment with it until you like how it looks. So the other thing I'm gonna do specifically to this clip, just because it's a little jittery, is I'm gonna warp stabilize it to see if I can smooth it out a bit. So we wanna nest it again, hit okay, go over to effects, hit warp, Drop that stabilizer right on, and let's do like 5%. So here's what our clip looks like. And a nice little speed ramp to recap. I added the black bars to the clip. Directly to the clip itself, I animated the position of it, and my movement went from right to left. Your movement can go whichever way you want it to go, depending on the energy of the video. And then I nested it, added a speed ramp, nested it again in this case, and added a warp stabilizer. Now again, I've added these black bars, so if I wanted a bit of vertical motion, I can do that. So let's click into this nested sequence, and then this one here, and assuming that the black bars, I think will probably come to here, we can take a look right there. We can also keyframe in some vertical motion. So here's our vertical axis here, and let's drag it 
down a bit. How about right there? And then at the end of the frame, let's have it end up like right there. So now our clip is moving from right to left as well as some downward motion. So let's see what that looks like. It's not bad. I don't know if I like the downward motion. Maybe I should have went up with it, but you get the point. So here's one more example for you guys that's gonna show you how to do a more of a zoom in or a zoom out motion. So this clip here is already kind of zooming in. I wanna enhance that a little bit. So let's go and add the adjustment layer with the black bars and I'm just going to alt drag this one over. Now let's animate the scale. Click the toggle animation button here. We're gonna start at 100%. Let's go to the end of the clip and we're just gonna to wanna to mess with it a little bit. Let's maybe take it to like right there, 130. And maybe I want it to move down a little bit, so I'll animate the position of it. Drag it back, click that there. And once we get to here, let's take it down to like right there. All right, let's see what that looks like. Look at that. That's probably a little bit too much zoom. You gotta be careful with the zoom in and zoom out ones because if you do too much too fast, it is gonna look a bit more artificial and fake as opposed to like a true zoom in. So I'm gonna take this back to maybe, where are we at, 130? Let's take it back to like 115, half of that. See how it looks now? Yeah, and right there it looks a lot more natural. Super easy to do, and if I wanted to do a zoom out effect, it's just the reverse thing where you start at a zoomed in scale and bring it back out to 100 or wherever you want. So I hope you guys learned something from this super quick tutorial and I really hope you guys will be able to go back through some of the footage that you thought was unusable. Try this technique and discover, hey, now I can use this clip, there's movement to it, there's some energy to it and it's going to make your video or film project look that much more polished. So thanks so much for watching, would love it if you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Hit the like button for me, if you didn't like the video, dislike it. That's fine, I mean, I guess that's that's fine. Type something sweet for me in the comments below. And how about we do this again next week? So there's gonna be another video. And uh, I kinda like hanging out with you guys. So I'll see you on the next video. Peace.